section 4.1.1 was a unit that took us two days. Uh, one day we were examining some, some tile patterns and on the next day we were trying to find a way to present it. The basic idea for this section was how do we find, use, and explain the connections between the representations. We were given um, several different representations in one problem and each group basically took one. I am going to deeply analyze one of those um, and then basically go through the others quickly. As we go through this chapter, I'm really hoping that you'll kind of think about these four representations of data. We can represent things as a table. We know that we can represent them as a rule, the pattern tiles, or a situation will come later, or as a graph. And we know that, uh, for example, most of you know by now how to take a rule, plug some numbers in it to make a table, and then take that table and make a graph. As we go through this chapter, I'll say this multiple times, we're going to try to find direct connections between the different representations so that we can go through them more easily. There's also some value in finding out how they're connected. And so that is a key to this one, is to start seeing how these are connected. And they gave us some problems that were fairly tricky and had a couple of different ways of doing them. So we're going to start with problem number one. Now problem number one looked like this, and they gave you figures, uh, I believe it was figure one, two, and three, and then asked you to draw figure zero, four and five. Now, I've colored the pattern as a way of helping you see the representation. When we talk about ways of helping other people, this is one of the ways you can do that is by coloring it. Okay, as we look at this pattern, first let's just look at it and see how it grows. I noticed that I had a middle section and I like to focus on a big kind of a rectangular square in the middle and then what's attached on the outside. My in the middle of this I saw a square. This square in figure one was a three by three, figure two a four by four, uh, figure three a five by five. Continuing that pattern I said okay if this is a two by two, three by, I'm sorry, three by three, four by four, five by five, then figure four will be a six by six, figure five will be a seven by seven. I noticed that if I broke it up this way, I also just had one tile on the top, always one tile on the top. And then I had some tiles on the bottom. I had one, two, three, four, so then that would make this five, make this six. Just how I found figures four and five, I also did the same thing backwards. If this was four by four, then three by three, then that had to be two by two. Same thing with the numbers, four, three, two, one, with one up on the top. Now this works for us when all these figure numbers are close to each other. But when we start trying to think about what figure 100 is, that's way too big for us to, to make these figures go out that way. So we've got to connect it to something that we know. The figure number becomes the counter for us. It becomes kind of how we want to relate things. So if I look at figure one, I'm going to go ahead and write on this. I already did most of it, but I have that square in the middle. That square in the middle has three, is a three by three. Well, three by three would be two more than the figure number. In other words, one, instead of having one here, I have three, so that's two more. Instead of having just one here, I have three, so that's two more. Let's see if that works. Two, uh, three more, I'm sorry, two more would be four. Do I have four by four? Two more would be five. Five by five. So if my figure number is x, then this becomes x plus two times x plus two. Now the way you find the area or the number of tiles in a square or rectangle is you multiply the length times the width. You don't do that in some other instances, but 
in squares and rectangles, if you know the dimensions, you can multiply them to find out how many are in there. And so we have that. Now let's look at this top part. The top part always remained 1. Didn't matter what I did, so it's just 1. Down at the bottom, I always had a number that was 1 more than my figure number. There's 2 here, but this is figure 1. There's 3 in figure 2, and 4 in figure 3. So that tells me that this is going to be x plus 1. Now how am I going to use that when I do figure 100? Okay, If I know that it's always 2 more than the figure number, well the figure number is 100, so this will be 102 tall, and it'll be 102 wide. This one up here, I'm just going to put a number inside because it's just going to be one block. Then down at the bottom, we said this is the figure number plus one. So this is going to be 101 wide, and of course it is just one tall. Now, that gives me kind of a picture of what figure 100. I'm going to do one additional thing that I think might be helpful. Let's make figure X. What would the figure look like if I just, instead of thinking of it like I did before, instead of a number, think of it as x? Well, just like we saw up here, this is what it's going to look like. This side would be x plus 2 tall. It's going to be x plus 2 wide. This little block up here is going to connect up in the corner. It's going to be 1 by 1. And this one's going to be 1 by, um, I think we said x plus 1. Now, if I put these together in a rule, if I just wrote them down, it would be hard to follow. And so I'm going to use color to show. Where did I get the x plus 2 by x plus 2? Well, that's the square, and we multiply it because that is how we, that is how we find the area of a square, or the number of tiles in a square. Then I had this one piece down here in red that was 1 by, I'm sorry, 1 by x plus 1. 1 by x plus 1 is just going to be x plus 1 tiles, so I can just add in another x plus 1 tiles. Then I have the tile that's right up at the top on the corner, and so I'm just going to add 1. Now, um, we were asked to make a table of it, and so I made a table. I used the rule to find the table. I could have counted it, but you can see that by the time I got to figure 100, that would be some really big numbers. So 0 had 6, 1 had 12, 2 had 20, 3 had 30, 4 had 42. And since I used the rule, I actually went back up and counted some of the figures to see if I had the right number in there. When I graphed this, I could see from the table that I wasn't going up by the same amount each time. I went up by 6, then by 8, then by 10, then by 12. And so I see that the number going up each time is different. So I know it's not a straight line. And when I graphed these, I didn't have much room on my graph paper, so I had to use a fairly big scale on the side, and I could use still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 and I got a line that starts to curve and go upward. Okay, now, there was one other way that we could do this A part. And I saved it, I didn't fill it all out, but some students actually saw it as moving this tile over here and getting a rectangle. Well, I'm still going to connect it to the figure number. If I do that, this is 3 wide, and this is figure 1. And this is 4 tall, which is 3 more than the figure number. So I'm going to say x plus 3 times x plus 2. So I could use this as my rule. x plus 3 times x plus 2. Now, this may seem a lot easier, and in a lot of shapes, if you can do that, it will be. But the other method get you at some really more diverse shapes. I hope this has helped. We will have a continuation for the other problems really quickly on part two.